Okay, let's uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everybody to today's informational webinar for prospective college partners. We're really happy to have you. Thank you for making uh, some time out of your day uh, to join us. We're really excited that we had over 70 colleges register for uh, today's uh, webinar, uh, which we're really, really excited about. Uh, I'm Matt Rubinoff. I'm the founder and executive director of Center for Student Opportunity. I'm also joined today by my colleague Brenda Cordero, our College Partner Relations Associate, who you'll be hearing from uh, throughout today's presentation. We have about a 30-minute presentation for you, and we'll field uh, some questions after that. If you have any questions at any time uh, throughout the presentation, uh, just type those into your questions box, and uh, we'll be monitoring uh, there and uh, we'll try to field as many of those questions as we can um, at the end of our presentation. So without further ado, uh, we will go ahead and get started. I, I'd like to begin the uh, conversation uh, or the presentation by offering a little bit of context uh, for our work. Uh, we obviously think there's something special about being the first in your family to attend and graduate from college. There are more than 15 million students enrolled in post-secondary institutions today, and four and a half million of those students are low-income, first-generation college students. Unfortunately, nine out of every 10 won't earn a bachelor's degree by the age of 24, and that's a problem. The issue, in our opinion, isn't so much that first-generation college students lack the motivation or qualification for college, but simply that too often these students lack access to good information and support to navigate the college process, and perhaps more importantly, to really access the colleges and universities that are most committed to their success. And so that's where we come in. Uh, CSO partners with four-year colleges and universities uh, to support their efforts on behalf of first-generation college students, and we create tools to help first-gens with the college search and planning. We know that so many four-year colleges and universities, like the ones you represent, care about first-gen students, they can be accessible and affordable options for them, and certainly give students the best shot at being successful in and out of the classroom and graduating. But the challenge is making sure that the students and those who are supporting these students really believe it. All too often, even high-achieving, motivated students are choosing post-secondary options that aren't the most conducive to their success. The for-profits, trade schools, online options, even uh, two-year colleges and, and non-selective commuter schools in, in some cases. Uh, and, and this is simply because that's what these students and families believe to be the only realistic, attainable, and affordable options for them. So our goal, first and foremost, is to help aspiring first-gen students realize that great college opportunities do exist at four-year colleges, particularly at schools that have campus programs and support services to help them succeed academically, socially, and especially financially. We believe strongly that a high tide raises all boats, that the more colleges that support our mission and participate in our program, the stronger our collective voice will be to demonstrate that the opportunity for college does exist for first gens. And that's really a driving principle we want our college partners to share. And that in and of itself should be a compelling reason to join us. But at the same time, our program delivers real value and benefits for participating institutions. We help college partners reach prospective students, promote and strengthen their efforts on behalf of first-gen students, and share and build upon best practices for successfully recruiting and retaining first-gen students. We'll get into a little bit about how we do all of those things uh, over the course of this presentation. And it's through the college partner application process that we'll have a chance to learn more about your institution's commitment to first-gen students. And you'll also, uh, at that time, have the opportunity to learn more about the ins and outs of our program and, and to ask us 
uh, questions, but to help you out as you consider completing the application for partnership, uh, we do want to give you a cursory overview of our program and, and highlight the major benefits and services of partnership. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Brenda. All right. Thank you, Matt. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Brenda Cordero. As Matt mentioned, I'm the College Partner Relations Associate here at Center for Student Opportunity. Um, so our flagship initiative and one of our first areas of engagement for college partners is, of course, I'm first org. And in 2013, we were fortunate enough to win a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And therefore, we launched I'm first org, which is an online community celebrating first-gen students um, and supporting the next generation of students who are working hard to reach that goal. And we've received um, a very warm reception from students, schools, youth-serving organizations, and even media. Um, we've quickly become a leading voice and resource for that first-gen movement. And um, with this momentum, um, we'd like to say we're continuing to grow our community of close to 200 college partners who share our mission and care about first-gens on their campus. Um, IronFirst.org is, first and foremost, um, a college search tool uh, designed with first gens in mind. So unique from other popular um, college search tools, profiles of colleges um, and universities on IronFirst.org help students answer the most essential question of what's in it for me as a first generation college student. Um, and we go beyond talking about um, the leafy green campus and like the golf architecture and painting a broad broad brushstroke of the institution's facts and figures. Um, and we really want to focus the college profile on more important campus programs and opportunities for first gens. For example, um, do they offer a fly-in program for prospective students, or a summer bridge program um, for incoming students, or a peer mentoring on campus to help uh, students um, persist to graduation. Um, and the facts and figures on the college profile highlight important student diversity, um, student success, and affordability, and admissions metrics. So, so students can also tell a college um, if they're interested and share colleges with their friends on social media as well. Um, and Matt will now give you an overview on uh, the student profile and database. Thanks, Brenda. Uh, so you're taking a, a peek here at the college partner user dashboard. Uh, you can see uh, a few uh, key um, points at the top of your screen. College partners are able to track how many uh, views their, their profile page is getting. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, directory of organizations. Uh, you can also uh, see uh, the number of students who are interested, who have expressed an interest in your institution uh, through the, the application and, um, and easily export uh, students' information as well. Uh, in, in addition to waiting for students to come to you through imfirst.org, our college partners can be more proactive uh, with your outreach to prospective students by scouring the, the database uh, of users and running searches based on your own uh, um, criteria or certain qualifications you're looking for. Uh, you can view student, uh, the student profile uh, information that they provide. Here's a, an example of a, of a fully completed uh, student uh, profile. And you can click to save uh, students that of our, are of interest to you and from your dashboard are also able to export uh, a database of, uh, of saved student information. One of the other uh, important features of imfirst.org and an area that we've really become a leader in is helping colleges to identify and build relationships with community-based organizations and college access programs. So on imfirst.org, uh, college partners have direct access to a national directory of over 2,500 college access programs, community-based organizations, and college prep charter schools. This uh, directory allows for partners to really go beyond just your regular high school visits during recruitment travels and to connect with these organizations that are really uh, picking up the slack where today's high schools, unfortunately, are too often falling short with how, uh, with, with how they're able to or not able to help low-income first-gen students navigate the college process. So we're still working to get many of these institutions, or sorry, these organizations to fully build out their profiles. 
uh, but this is uh, an example of what a completed uh, organization profile looks like. Uh, you can note that um, it uh, mentions the populations they serve, uh, the program areas of focus, when they offer services, and, and, and each profile uh, will have one, if not two, uh, contacts listed with it. Uh, and you can contact those individuals directly through uh, the I'mFirst.org uh, web application. Moving on, I wanted to highlight our scholarship program and our student blog. So uh, for six years now, we've been awarding scholarships to first-generation college students who are matriculating to a college partner institution. In turn, uh, the scholarship winners chronicle their college experiences and are able to give advice on the I'mFirst.org blog. Uh, the success of our student blog has really spoken to us about how hungry students are, especially first-gen students, for encouragement and advice from their near peers. Uh, even in a virtual way, uh, college-bound students are, are, are finding um, inspiration and encouragement and advice from uh, these student bloggers that they can identify with and, and who have come before them in their pursuit of college. So it is a, it is a competitive scholarship. We award between eight to ten scholarships per year, but it's important to mention that only students matriculating to a CSO college partner school are eligible and when we open the application every spring, we always invite our college partners to share this scholarship opportunity with their incoming first-generation college students. Lastly, I'mFirst.org is a storytelling project. We are collecting YouTube video stories from first-generation college students and graduates from across the country. These stories are coming from current students, successful graduates across many career paths, college deans and presidents, and even some familiar faces like the First Lady, Michelle Obama. Together, these stories are inspiring and offering advice to the next generation of students who will be first. And our college partners have been great about rallying their campus communities behind this effort. Some, like Bucknell University, are not only creating videos for our campaign, uh, but they're hosting them on their own websites, uh, as you can see here. So whether you become a college partner uh, or not, we want to encourage you to share this opportunity with your campus community and encourage first-gen students, faculty, and staff alike on your campus uh, to par participate and really help us proliferate this uh, public awareness campaign to put a face to and uh, give a voice to who are first-generation college students and graduates. That, I think, covers uh, the I'mFirst.org uh, program and benefits for college partners. want to turn it back over to Brenda, who's going to share a little bit more about our guidebook. Um, thanks, Matt. So alongside our um, online program, we also um, annually publish and distribute the I'm First Start to College, which um, last year I had the privilege to help put together, um, it is, which is uh, a unique college guidebook designed to help first and college students make their college dreams a reality. Um, the guide includes a college planning curriculum with articles, activities, and worksheets, and college partner profiles, which um, again highlight the important campus programs and opportunities for first gens. So since it's a first publication in 2008, um, I forgot to say that we've distributed over 30,000 copies nationwide. Every year our college partners help us sponsor um, a distribution of a few thousand copies as well to high schools and community-based organizations of their choice. Um, along with that, we also have um, e-newsletters and social media. So to further promote um, our college partners um, to a national audience, we distribute e-newsletters that reach um, over approximately 40,000 students, counselors, and college access providers. Um, our monthly Opportunity Knocks newsletter highlights these opportunities for first gen on our college partner campuses, which we also actively promote um, over Twitter and Facebook. And now Matt will tell you a little bit more about um, Another benefit, which is our college partner learning community. Awesome, thanks, Brenda. To yeah, round out uh, the, the the college partnership uh, benefits and services, 
um, as a uh, as a community of peers, we are facilitating opportunities for our college partners. Sorry, I need to click the slide forward here. Uh, we are facilitating opportunities for our college partners to share with one another and exchange ideas, best practices, successful models, uh, and even innovative approaches. Last year, we launched the College Partner Exchange Listserv, which is an online uh, discussion forum uh, for college partners to ask questions of one another uh, and share ideas or, or noteworthy accomplishments and achievements. Uh, we're also hosting webinars on partner-driven topics like peer mentoring programs, partnering with CBOs, and uh, flying and visit programs. And through these webinars are spotlighting institutions who are excelling in very specific ways at recruiting and retaining first-generation college students. Soon we'll also start publishing white papers to better document these findings and these lessons learned uh, as an added benefit to our college partners. Uh, it's also worth noting that for our student-facing programs, we host monthly uh, hashtag first gen office hour Twitter chats and uh, monthly Google Hangouts on air uh, on various topics. And we found a lot of success in including our college partners in these virtual events. Uh, recent past topics have ranged from what's in a financial aid award letter to personal statements to focusing on specialized schools like HBCUs, HSIs, uh, military schools, women's colleges, uh, and uh, Christian colleges, too. Uh, these, these virtual events are another great way for our college partners to uh, gain some, some visibility and, and face time and, uh, and, and communicate with uh, our national audience of first-gen college-bound students and, and those who are supporting them. So that really uh, is our program in a nutshell. Uh, to recap, CSO college partners form a strong network of peer institutions that are similarly committed to supporting first-gen college students. And through our programs, we are able to promote and strengthen college partners' efforts to recruit and retain first gens. Uh, we help you reach prospective first gens and their supporters. And we facilitate opportunities for college partners to share best practices and learn about successful models for recruiting and retaining first gens on your campus. As a nonprofit organization, uh, if accepted into our partnership, we do ask college partners to fulfill an annual partnership contribution, uh, which helps us sustain and grow our programs. The uh, full partnership is $2,800 uh, and includes all of the benefits and services we've gone over today. There is an associate level partnership, which is $1,500, and that focuses the partnership more on the marketing opportunities uh, like the profile on imfirst.org and in the printed I'm First Guide to College. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Brenda, who's going to walk us through the application process. Um, thank you, Matt. So um, as you can see, you can go to uh, imfirst.org um, slash partners slash college partners to access the application. Um, college partner applications are reviewed and approved twice a year with the deadline approaching um, on May 31st um, to begin partnership on July 1st. Um, institutions who apply should be a four-year residential college or university that shares our commitment, of course, to supporting first-gen students. And CSO college partners are generally characterized as institutions with two things. So one, being um, above average retention and graduation rates compared to their state average, and two, a clear commitment to um, first-gen college students as demonstrated by the campus programs and services that support them. So in the application, uh, just to answer a couple of questions that go over one, your school's mission, history, and, and relevant data on, first -gen, on your first-gen student population, um, including their retention and graduation rates, um, important campus programs that support first 
Gen College students and, and or other conditionally underserved populations, either it be academically, socially, and financially, which is also some of the programs that you would um, essentially feature on the profile um, so you be um, accepted into the partnership. Um, and campus part sponsored programs are partnerships that support pre-college students locally or nationally. And finally, any campus contacts who would be involved in the partnership. So when your application is received, um, I will reach out to you directly to schedule a phone interview to learn more about your institution's efforts on behalf of first-gen students. Um, and during the phone interview, um, which Matt and I will um, help um, conduct, you will also have the opportunity to learn more about us and ask questions about the partnership. Um, and after the phone interview, we confer internally and notify you within a matter of days um, if your partnership is approved. So we'll ask you to sign a college partnership agreement, if that is the case, and then I will go forward in helping initiate the partnership and helping you kind of work through all of the logistics, um, like with setting up the profile and things like that. Awesome. Thanks, Brenda. So you can see on your screen the web page to visit uh, for more information as well as to access the, uh, the online application. We'll also be sending this link out um, in follow-up, in our follow-up communication uh, after the webinar. Um, that really uh, is our presentation for today. Uh, we do want to field any questions that you might have at this time. Uh, a couple have already come in, but now is your, your chance to, um, to ask any uh, questions you might have, so please type those in your box and um, also through the uh, through the application process will be another opportunity to talk more individually and, uh, and answer any, um, any other questions that you might have. Okay, great. So some questions are coming in. Uh, the first two are from Matt Power. Um, his first question is, can you tell us what your viewership uh, numbers are? Uh, sure. I'm sorry we overlooked that. Uh, we are seeing uh, close to 200,000 unique visitors to imfirst.org uh, every year. Um, that translates to about 15,000 visitors a month. And uh, in our first year, we had uh, 15,000 users uh, sign up. Um, so we're encouraged uh, by the traction we're building and, uh, and, and we'll be continuing to grow. Uh, you know, organically, I guess, if you will. I think it's important to, to, to have some perspective that um, we are uh, a nonprofit organization. We're not taking kind of commercial tactics of purchasing student names and, um, and, and, and while we're growing and, and becoming a preferred and familiar resource, we're, we're, we're not yet competing with the likes of some of the the, uh, the bigger names, uh, I guess, if you will, in this space. Uh, Matt's second question is, is, do you have any metrics on first-gen success rates um, before and after partnership uh, for your existing partner schools? Um, it's a great question, and I wish we, we had uh, more data to, to be able to share. We're working as an organization to become more uh, data-driven and evidence-based um, in everything that we do. Uh, the launch of imfirst.org uh, in late 2013 is a huge step um, in the right direction in, in terms of how we're able to collect data um, from our users. And uh, being that we're only a year, year and a half into this, um, there's only so much we can do to, uh, uh, to evaluate that data um, and, uh, and especially draw any conclusions. So we're not ready to, uh, to, to claim that, that through onfirst.org X number of students or X percentage of students have, um, uh, have, have matriculated to a partner institution and, and, and graduated uh, within four to six years, but we're, we're, we're on that course. Uh, we will be um, using National Student Clearinghouse data uh, to gather a lot of that information and doing surveys of our student users and college partners as well uh, to, um, to be able to deliver 
on those metrics. Our next question comes from Heather Wofford. Uh, where are most of the students who are using this website located? Are there certain states with large populations of participation? Uh, great question, Heather. Uh, the, the way I answer that question is, is that this is a national initiative. Uh, we're reaching across all 50 states. We have uh, users signed up um, from each and every uh, uh, state, uh, which we're proud to say. Uh, when we look at kind of where there are uh, um, where there are concentrations or higher volumes of uh, of users, it, it really mirrors the population uh, densities. So where there are more people, uh, we are attracting more more students. But but we are reaching uh, far and wide and 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 uh, marketing to high schools and community-based organizations in all 50 states, we, um, we're always welcoming and, uh, of college, uh, college partners who want to help us gain better traction in their traditional uh, recruitment geographies. Um, so in coming on board to our program, we'll want to talk to you about you know, where are your students coming from, are there ways that you can help us put imfirst.org in front of those students and counselors uh, and um, college access providers. Uh, so um, thank you for the question, Heather. Amy asks uh, if we could repeat the financial commitment um, from, the, uh, for, for, from college partners. Uh, absolutely. Uh, that information is also provided uh, in the um, application process uh, and certainly in the uh, partnership agreement that any college partner would uh, would sign to initiate the partnership. But um, uh, we are, um, yeah, sorry, there's two, two levels of partnership. The full partnership is $2,800, and uh, that includes the whole kit and caboodle, um, the profile on the website, access to the student database, access to the organization directory, the profile in the website, uh, sorry, in the guidebook, uh, as well as um, sponsoring the distribution of the guidebook to uh, schools and organizations of your choosing, uh, as well as um, inclusion in our uh, email newsletters and uh, participation in our uh, best practices learning community efforts. The associate level partnership is uh, is fifteen hundred dollars, and that's more of a I guess marketing advertising type of a relationship or a, um, a place for some colleges to get a foot in the door. Uh, they want to be profiled on the website, and they want to be profiled in the guidebook as well, and uh, are treating it more as an advertising opportunity. Some of the other more strategic and collaborative ways we're supporting uh, college partners are reserved for our full level partners. A couple folks are asking if they're going to receive a copy of the presentation and yes we are recording the presentation and you will receive it uh, in the follow-up communication. How many college partners do you currently have? Uh, for 2014-15 uh, the number was right around 190 college partners. Uh, we're, we're hopeful that after this, um, this application period, we're going to um, eclipse that 200 college partner mark, which we're excited about and will be a really, um, a really big milestone for, for us to reach. Brooke would like to know how the scholarship recipients are selected um, from the, the partner colleges. Uh, um, there is an application process. Uh, students have to apply uh, for the scholarship like they would any, um, any other scholarship. It's not a nomination process um, from our college partners, but our college partners are encouraged to, um, to share the scholarship opportunity with their incoming first-gen students. We're also you know, uh, marketing the scholarship to 
all of our users on imfirst.org and we're listed on all of the prominent uh, scholarship uh, search sites as well. So it is um, an open uh, application process and uh, uniquely we uh, we aren't really concerned with um, with uh, grades or test scores that's actually not even asked in the application process. Uh, we're looking for students who are attending a, a range of, of institutions and come from uh, diverse uh, backgrounds uh, and have unique stories to share um, uh, with that common thread of being uh, first generation college students. It's more about looking for students who want to be advocates and spokespeople and mentors for the first generation cause because they, in turn, uh, of the scholarship, uh, become bloggers on the website. Uh, the, um, the scholarship uh, ranges from four to eight thousand um, dollars and that is renewable, so one to two thousand dollars a year for four years of college. So this is an interesting question from Sarah. She says she works at a school that has four campuses. Two of the four campuses have developed programs specifically for first-gen students, while the other two have not. Would their school be a good candidate for on first? Um, they've been reluctant to apply because uh, they can't say that their first-gen programming is consistent across all of the campuses. Um, it's a great question, and I guess we, we'd be interested in learning more about your institution and your campuses. We do view these partnerships as institutional, um, and so we understand that different institutions are at different stages of their um, program uh, development and implementation uh, as it concerns first gens, and, uh, and, and we want to meet institutions where they are uh, for the most part. Um, I, I, I would encourage you to apply um, and give us a chance to, to learn a little bit more. Um, you know, we, we're, we're really about uh, helping uh, disseminate information and educate students on the array of college opportunities that do exist for them. And, and so um, you know, the fact that two of your campuses do have first-gen programs in place that seemingly are are, are being successful would, would be compelling to us uh, and, and would be uh, noteworthy to certainly highlight in, uh, on your institution's profile um, on our website and our guidebook. Uh, Matt, really quickly, I would like to add to that question. So um, while we do definitely encourage on the application to show you know, any first gen specific programs that you have, um, on the campus that are established. Um, again, it also does say traditionally underserved population. So even though it may not be labeled as like first gen specific, but helping many students who are most likely first gen or those who need help obviously um, to get to and throughout college, that is also something to consider as well. So um, just for those um, out there listening, um, if they're kind of reluctant um, on applying simply because of that. And like Matt said, we definitely encourage the, an application. Thanks, Brenda. Great questions. There's still a few more to get to. I, I'm really happy to see this. Um, Chelsea from Queens College wants to know how we find the first-gen students. Um, great question. I mentioned before that we are not buying student names. We're, we're doing this really organically and, and, and as a nonprofit. Um, our, our marketing to uh, or outreaching to high schools, um, counselors, community-based organizations, college access providers, and, and really uh, informing those who are on the front lines with students um, about who we are and what we're doing and encouraging them to use our tools and our resources with them. So we have uh, um, close to 40,000 people receiving our email newsletters um, presently, and, and that's a primary um, mode that we're, we're outreaching and marketing. We're also trying to, to find ways to meet students where they are, uh, and where they are is on social media. So uh, we have um, uh, growing followings on Twitter and Facebook, especially 
um, and, and uh, you know, are also attending national conferences, NACAC, NCAN, NPEA, uh, meeting with, um, with, with student supporters and, and, and helping them learn about, uh, about I'mFirst.org and the I'm First Guide to College as, um, as resources to use that are designed specifically for, for first gens. The last uh, um, uh, piece of, of, of the answer to that question is um, that we also are a Google grantee. Uh, as a nonprofit, we have free advertising on Google, and Google is a, a powerful tool. So uh, a lot of traffic just from people who are searching on Google, first-gen college opportunities or scholarships or, or other keywords. Um, we are coming up very high on those search results and, and that drives uh, a lot of our, our site's traffic as well. Tom wants to know if uh, users' information, if, if users' information is available to all college partners or only to those that they, that they like on the website. Uh, great question, Tom. Uh, for our full partners, um, all of the uh, student uh, information is available. Um, uh, you will be able to, to see both uh, students who have said they like your institution, but also uh, access the entire uh, database of prospective students and be more proactive with your outreach. For associate partners, uh, we do let them see who has liked uh, their page and to access the, those students' information. But one thing that the associate level partnership doesn't provide is access to the entire uh, prospective student database. Another question from Brooke, another good one. Uh, beyond the annual partnership contribution, are there additional fees um, per matriculating student, for example? or any additional costs incurred from the partner college? Uh, great question, and another way that we really stand out, I think, uh, in the marketplace and as a nonprofit uh, concerned with low-income first-gen students. Uh, that partnership contribution is a flat fee and all-inclusive. Uh, there's no hidden costs or uh, additional fees um, per matriculating student or per student lead. Um, I know that is something that uh, some other marketing uh, companies uh, that do lead gen work and, and, and have similar efforts do, but we're proud to say that we don't. Um, Gunter asks, is our program only for residential programs uh, or does it allow for online or blended programs? Uh, we do uh, work primarily with four-year residential traditional colleges and universities. We believe in that experience uh, for, um, uh, for first-generation college students. Statistically speaking, we see students who are able to uh, make their way to a, uh, a, a campus and have a residential experience uh, persist and graduate uh, at much higher rates than those that don't. Um, so that is uh, a focus of ours. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a prerequisite, um, although we're not really working, yeah, we're not working with, with purely online institutions. If your school is a blended um, a program and there are residential uh, opportunities available, I would encourage you to apply and through the application process we can get more into the weeds about what that actually means and what that looks like and um, whether you would be a, a good fit for our partnership. All right, I think we have one last question. Uh, we've covered a lot um, and this is maybe putting, putting me on the spot, but Eric uh, asks, in, one, in a one minute conversation, how would you communicate the benefits of your service to a higher level manager? Uh, great question. I, I think it boils down to uh, CSO and our college partners are committed to promoting and strengthening college opportunities for first generation college students. Uh, on the promotional side, 
uh, I'm first and, and CSO are going to help us uh, increase awareness and visibility for our campus as a friendly place uh, for first-gen students and, and give us some recognition for the good work and, and opportunities we offer to first-gen college students. And on the strengthening side, being part of uh, the CSO community of college partners is, is going to help us improve upon our efforts to recruit and retain first-gen students by learning from our peers um, and better understanding the landscape of what's happening uh, on different campuses um, and, uh, and, and bringing new ideas and, and best practices and, and, and models to our campus to help us not only recruit um, uh, more or a higher caliber of first-gen students to our campus, but better serve them once they do come to us. So I hope that, uh, that that's a winning answer for you, Eric, and for everyone else. Um, I really uh, appreciate, again, you guys taking the time to, uh, to join us for this webinar and, and learning uh, more about the CSO and I'm First program. Uh, we look forward to receiving your applications and getting to know you a little bit more uh, through the application and, and, and phone interview process. Uh, we will be following up uh, with a recording of this webinar and some more directions on uh, where and how to apply. Again, the application deadline is May 31st um, uh, to begin partnership July 1st. But uh, applications are welcome uh, sooner, and we do review them on a rolling basis. So uh, um, if you are able to get in an application uh, earlier in May, uh, we'll be uh, happy to set up the phone, call, the phone interview accordingly and um, be able to get a, a bit of a head start with some of you. So thank you again. I uh, really appreciate it and, and look forward to talking with many of you uh, more soon. Thank you.